Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for tonight's presentation on Ask Us Why, What You Need to Know Before Making That ADSB Investment. My name is Jeff Simon. I'm president of Social Flight, and this is part of Social Flight's educational webinar series. So thank you for joining us. For those of you joining us for the first time, Social Flight is the free app and mobile app dedicated to supporting general aviation. If you visit socialflight.com or download the Social Flight mobile app for Apple and Android devices, you have access to over 10,000 aviation events and destinations, clients, pancake breakfast, air shows, FAA seminars, $100 Hamburg destinations. It's all in Social Flight, and you even get a weekly email with a list of all of the aviation events happening in your local area, and that includes tonight's presentation. Now, before we get started, a few tips. Uh, a recording of tonight's presentation will be available on socialflight.com. We'll also email out a version of that, and that will be available about 24 hours after uh, we finish tonight's presentation. You'll get a link with that through email, and uh, we'll get it out to you there, as well as it being available in Social Flight. Feel free also to post questions during tonight's presentation. There's a Q&A chat section right on the webinar where you can post questions. We'll try to get to those either during the presentation or directly after the presentation as well. And also, due to a large number of users online, occasionally your computer or the software will go to sleep. So if you've been watching it, move your mouse every once in a while, make sure it knows you're alive, and then uh, they won't get accidentally logged out of the presentation. Now, as I mentioned, in addition to the events you can fly to, we also have online events, which is why we're all here tonight for this great webinar. Um, before we begin, I'd like to show you a couple pictures of our own social flight Beechcraft Bonanza, which we chose to equip with both the Aspen Evolution PFD and the L3 Lynx. And um, we're particularly proud of the, the fact that we get so lucky to be able to fly around on a plane like this, but when we went and had the opportunity to start from scratch and look at what we were going to equip our panel with, it was very important to us that we had the best of breed, the best options when we were looking at each of the specific things as you go around the panel. And that led us directly to Aspen. When we look at PFDs, it directly led us when we were thinking ADSB to having a dedicated uh, a, a transponder in the NGT 9000. And we'll talk a little bit later in the presentation also that um, we chose to go with the 9000 plus so that we could have active traffic as well. And one of the reasons that we're uh, so uh, big on the L3 link system can really be demonstrated by this one image that we have right here on an en route trip. You know, every one of the displays in your aircraft is, serves a function, right? Uh, navigation or approaches or whatever happens to be happening um, uh, during the phase of flight that you're doing. And because of that, you're going to want them at different zoom levels and doing different jobs. And it is very easy to get information overload. Um, what I mean by that is that if we look at the display right there, it's giving us a, a wider range view. If we look at the, uh, the GPS navigation display, and it doesn't necessarily make it so easy to see that there is traffic right uh, next to us. And yet, by having this dedicated hazard display that's integrated and part of our transponder, right above that display that we have for our GPS, you can see right there that uh, we have close traffic. We're able to avoid that. We're able to use it to be able to get METARS tasks and all of the other things that you'll learn about. We love our Avidyne IFD series, and it lets us put all sorts of information on the display there. But we also really, really love the fact that we can have all of this on a separate hazard display integrated in our transponder above that. And I just wanted to show people what, uh, in our opinion, a best-of-breed cockpit can look like. Uh, because uh, it really is important, I think, to have an option that allows you to choose things that fit your style of flying and have each product be the best that's out there for what it does. Now, we certainly have two experts here tonight in Bill Latigo from L3 Aviation Products and Scott Smith from Aspen Avionics. These are some of the top experts in the avionics industry. I'm also proud to call them both friends and they are extraordinarily experienced pilots, as you'll learn as well. And so with that, I'm going to hand it over now to Bill and Scott. We will start with Bill. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. 
Again, my name is Bill Latigo. I'm the Senior Aftermarket Regional Sales Manager for L3 Aviation Products. And I fly a sundry of airplanes, including Piper, Cessna, Beach, and Sears Aircraft. So first of all, I'd like to thank all of you for attending tonight's webinar. Um, it is very important, I know, to make a decision on your ADSB solution. And we appreciate you taking the time out of your busy days and evenings to listen to what's going on in the options that, that are available out there for, for you from L3 Technologies and Aviation Products and Aspen Avionics. I also like to thank Jeff and the, the team at Social Flight for doing this and hosting this webinar. If you don't have the app, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you, I use it all the time. And you know, it, it provides valuable information on aviation events and it doesn't matter where you're at. It, it's really an awesome thing. I enjoy getting the email every week to know exactly what's happening. So that's all I've got to say about that. Um, Scott, if you want to make an introduction here, that'd be great too. Yeah, th thanks, Bill. So Scott Smith here, Director of Sales at Aspen Avionics. Uh, I'm uh, excited to be here. Thanks to, for everybody for uh, joining. And uh, we got a lot of exciting stuff to talk about. So uh, yeah, we'll go ahead with the next slide there and let Bill, you continue. Perfect. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate that. So as some of you may or may not know, L3 has appointed Aspen Avionics as a Part 23 reseller for a LINX NGT9000 ADS-B transponder and other systems that we, we manufacture. So the big question is, so why the partnership? Well, L3 and Aspen are working together with a combined vision to provide pilots and aircraft owners with a solution that is innovative and is a viable alternative to meet the ADS-B mandate. This just isn't another Me Too ADSB solution like some of the competition. This Aspen and L3 solution is feature rich and is more affordable than others who require upgrades, which includes glass cockpits and displays and WAS navigators at, in their panel. So Scott, I'm, that's about enough I was gonna say about the, uh, the announcement. I've, one thing I do wanna add to this is the fact that for the customer's convenience, they can order it through L3, obviously, their dealer, authorized dealers, and also Aspen. So it's really convenient for you to be able to, to get the products from either one of the, the great manufacturers that has partnered together during this time. So Scott, I'm gonna turn it over to you to talk about some of the exciting offerings you have at Aspen Avionics. Thanks, Bill. Uh, yeah, so, so a couple of things. Um, that uh, I didn't mention a while ago is that I'm actually an aircraft owner myself, and I've been flying with the uh, NGT 9000 now for about three years and put about a 1,000 hours on the system. And so when I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you from firsthand experience. And um, I can tell you from that experience that it is a powerful solution. And, um, you know, uh, here at Aspen, we're very excited to bring you this streamlined interface that uh, allows you to basically give gives you the uh, the power of showing all these products on different screens and specifically with an Aspen Pro or an Aspen uh, 1500 or 2000 system uh, we're going to have uh, give you the ability and the and the uh, to customize your layout uh, to show different products on different screens at the same time so for example let's say I'm uh, flying along and I want to have uh, I could have traffic overlaid on my HSI on my Aspen all the time while I'm looking at uh, weather like Nexrad radar or uh, I could be looking at METARs or TFRs or whatnot on my uh, MFD and I could bring up uh, NOTAM and uh, uh, different things on my NGT 9000. So that, uh, that's a really powerful uh, uh, combination. And uh, also, uh, if you have synthetic vision on the uh, Aspen Pro or the MFD, which by the way, um, we're offering uh, the free upgrade tonight for everybody who, uh, who came out. Um, if you purchase a Pro or an MFD tonight, uh, you do get free synthetic vision. So that's a, that's a really nice uh, nugget. But basically what that does, having synthetic vision is, is we take the targets and we give them to you in 3D uh, relative to your position. So that is a really slick way and and gives you uh, unparalleled situational awareness uh, with the system. Uh, next slide, please. So all of the different products that we offer, I kind of want to go through those uh, with the Aspen, uh, is uh, the traffic, 
your next rad radar images, airments and segments, your TFRs, uh, winds and temperatures aloft, and also uh, METARs and um, your uh, forecast. So we do uh, we do all all of those products on the uh, on the Aspen. Uh, now, if you just have a a, a pro, uh, just so you know, on a, on a pro alone, you get uh, traffic and Nextrad only. With the MFDs, you get all the other products. And uh, some of the really cool things um, that that I've found and our dealers have found installing the uh, the NGT 9000. Uh, one of which is that you have options. So you can have uh, from an installation perspective, and let's say you have an existing WASP GPS in the panel. Well, L3 gives you the option of installing uh, the system with a splitter instead of having, having to mount another uh, WASP GPS antenna on the aircraft. So that's a that's a nice labor-saving uh, item there. And um, Ask yourself what you know. What am I what am I getting out of this uh, ADSB upgrade? You know, you can like like Bill said earlier on. I mean, you can you can start off and and let's just let's just meet the mandate and and go away and you don't really get the features. But with this uh, with this NGT nine thousand and the Aspen, now now you you you're utilizing um, well. First of all, with the NGT nine thousand, you're utilizing the real estate. In the panel, that that before, what'd you use that for? And it was about a few seconds out of each flight to turn a knob or push a button and put in a squat code, or not even touch it at all if you're VFR. And that was a, a good piece of real estate that now we're utilizing with a state-of-the-art, crystal clear touchscreen display, and it's dedicated to uh, utilizing the ADSB information. And so what I use it for is I'll use a split screen. I'll have traffic. On the left hand side and on the right hand side i'll be bringing up uh you know weather and and what's nice is that at a uh, at a quick touch of a finger i can grab a metar for my destination or my nearest airport and it brings it up in plain english so it's very simple to use and um like i said i've i've really enjoyed using this i'm we're super excited about this interface and um anyway when, I, when i'm purchasing something and I'm, I'm, i know everybody else out there is the same we want to get the most features gained for money spent, you know, most bang for our buck, if you will. And the NGT 9000, no question, offers offers all these things, most bang for your buck for sure. And let's not forget also about the Wi-Fi output that allows you to display traffic and weather on your Apple or Android products. Um, and with that, I'm going to let Bill jump into all of the uh, detailed features of the NGT 9000, and take it away, Bill. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that, Scott. So the big question of the day, and this is why everybody is here, so why links for your ADSB solution? Well, the links to NGT 9000 was designed to revolutionize the transponder and meet the ADSB mandate of 2020. With the traditional mode C transponder, you can set a spot code, just as, as Scott was just talking about, turn the mode suite switch the altitude and take off. And when you landed at your destination, you hopefully you remembered to turn it back to standby. So the beauty of this is the future and the technology has certainly changed over the last several years. The Lynx NGC 9000 is a dual band 1090 and 978 megahertz transponder. It has its own independent WASH GPS position source, ADSB in and out receiver, and it's all internal and it's inside the unit. No extra boxes or anything else that you have to add to the, the unit, it's all built inside. Another feature of this is it has Wi-Fi as well. So you can use a tablet, which because of its open architecture, you can use most of the popular apps today like ForeFlight, WingX Pro, Flight Plan Go, FlyQ, and, and many others. So you have all the traffic and weather plus other information on more displays, including Aspen's Evolution flight displays, providing more situational awareness in the cockpit. The NGT 9000 is the only solution in the market with a vivid color touchscreen display that can be seen in all different lighting conditions, including direct sunlight. I love that, especially when I'm flying down in South Florida and you know, you're, it's a bright sunny day 
and you can see everything on that screen, and it doesn't matter if you're wearing polarized sunglasses or not. The NGT 9000 is the only solution in the marketplace with options like Class B Toss, Terrain Vision, and Storm Scope, plus all the other features that uh, Scott had already previously discussed. You know, we talked about uh, TFRs, no TAMs, um, everything along the line for the airport information, Simpson wins a lot. It's all right there at a, a, a finger touch away. And so this transponder does a whole lot more today than the competition in the traditional mode C transponder of the past. The huge differentiator from the competition besides the high resolution color display is we have a three year warranty. Everybody else in the ADSB manufacturers world out there has a standard two, two year warranty. And we are the only Lynx NGT 9000, the whole series of Lynx itself, is the only one that's certified with the FAA for ATAS. For some of those of you who haven't heard of ATAS, let me explain a little. Most of you have already heard of, of, of TCAS in the past. It's been around forever. Well, ATAS is the TCAS for ADSB. And some of you may have already flown with active traffic in the past, but and you know is that if an aircraft flies in proximity of your aircraft, you'll get a traffic alert. And a lot of times these call outs are nuisance alerts because the traffic was not a factor. But you, trust me, and, and most of you we talk about it a lot. You still get these alerts and it drives you crazy. Well, ATAS, ATAS technology is much smarter today than the active traffic systems of the past. You will only get a traffic call out if the ATAS calculates the collision point between the two aircraft. So you can even be flying in formation with another aircraft side by side, and as long as either aircraft doesn't make a move that causes a calculated collision point, you will never get these annoying nuisance alerts again. However, though, if you happen to get an ATAS traffic call out, immediate action is required. The Lynx ADSB solution is the only product available that has the, a, the FAA ATAS certified. So all the other manufacturers, they can give you call outs, especially above 2,000 feet, and they, they do that. But the reason why, what happens when you descend down through 2,000 feet, they are required by the FAA to mute their traffic call outs because they're not certified. So when do you really need these traffic call outs? Well, it's when you're descending into the airport environment to land with other aircraft doing the exact same thing you are. This is a huge safety factor for Lynx. And by the way, it's included for free in the unit. Another popular model is the NGT 9000 Plus, which includes ADSB and active traffic. L3 built the first active traffic system for general aviation aircraft in 1997. It was a monumental safety system that over 20,000 aircraft still fly around with today. If you have Skywatch on board your aircraft, I highly recommend the NGT 9000 Plus for your aircraft because the technology has changed so much since 1997 that you can use your existing Skywatch traffic antenna, remove your nine pound processor, which is helpful for your useful load because the processor has been reduced down to a circuit board in the Lynx transponder. So why have traffic, active traffic and ADSB? You know something? Uh, I'm gonna ask Jeff Simon to answer that question for me. You don't want to hear from me. I'm just the sales guy, as we all, all know. <laughs> but I want you to talk to someone who literally has installed the 9000 Plus in his Bonanza. So, Jeff, let me ask you the question on behalf of the group. So why have you, you had active traffic and ADSB traffic all in the same place? That's a, that's a great question, Bill. And um, it, the, the answer is just what you said earlier, which is, you know, where's the danger when you're flying? And that is in the traffic pattern. And I fly into a lot of airports that are uh, not close enough to an ADSB ground station where while you're on the ground or when you're in the low traffic, you know, final approach or right in the pattern, you don't always have access to uh, a, uh, one of the ADSB trans, uh, transmitters. And so you're not necessarily seeing everything that's out there. You are going to see ADSB compliant traffic, but it makes a huge difference to me. And it was only actually last week when I was uh, in uh, flying into upstate New York that I actually saw firsthand how important that was. Is, uh, I was getting ready to turn final approach, and one of those uh, diamonds showed up on the screen, which indicates a non-ADSB. Uh, traffic 
uh, uh, response, uh, which was due to the active traffic on the Bonanza, and uh, really uh, was something that I didn't see. It was actually a jet that was coming in, and so it was uh, very good to know. Uh, uh, I think I can credit that with saving my bacon. And um, uh, all of the decisions that we made when it came to going to the, the Lynx 9000, as well as making sure that we chose the plus with the active traffic, were for some of the items that you talked about. I loved in particular the uh, splitter. So, uh, you know, uh, this got mentioned just briefly. I think Scott mentioned it earlier. Uh, one of the biggest things when you do an install is putting more antennas onto the plane and uh, having to put another GPS antenna on if you already have one for your navigator um, it is just, it was a great step that I was just able through the STC for the links to just use a splitter and use an existing GPS antenna. Um, I love having the dedicated hazard display, but I mean, uh, for me, it's that, it's the pause, it's having text Western uh, 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 information there. And uh, like you mentioned, the traffic alerts and the terrain alerts, uh, I, it really is amazing to me that you see things and sometimes you don't hear an alert because the system knows it's not a threat. And so you kind of get rid of these nuisance alerts. Now you only get alerts when something truly is a threat. And that seems to be, you can comment on this, Bill, this seems to be the philosophy of the unit itself because it doesn't just apply to traffic where you could be in formation, for example, as you mentioned, and not uh, get an alert, only what's a real threat. But it seems to be the exact same philosophy applied to the terrain because when you're in the uh like the you know when you're climbing out or you're coming in on approach you don't get the terrain alerts because it knows you're in the airport environment and when you're outside the airport environment you do and i find all of those to be uh, really important reasons as well as the fact that we fly to canada and a lot of the other systems out there uh that are the um uh, uh, the, the uh, other uh, kind of small systems that are out on the market are uat out and that obviously doesn't comply for international flights so that's a lot more than you asked bill but he gave me a chance to talk <laughs> oh i appreciate that jeff yeah thank you but you're absolutely right um the dual band you mentioned uh um Canada, you know, dual band is, is huge because, and, and I look at it in, in the aircraft I fly to, you know, we don't know exactly what, like the Bahamas and Mexico are going to do yet. We suspect they're going to go 1090, but we don't know. Well, we know Canada is going to do satellite-based ADSB. So what if you're flying into Canada? Um, your aircraft doesn't know the difference. As long as you've got fuel and, and everything else required on board, that aircraft doesn't care. But if you're going to spend money on a ADSB solution, please make sure it's dual band, 1090 or 978. You don't want to spend money, and I'm sorry, it's money, you know, is money, as we all know it, it really is, it's hard-earned money. I don't want to spend money for a, a single band 978 ADSB solution, and then I can't go to Canada or I can't go to the Bahamas. I, we, like I said, you don't want to waste that money. So I appreciate your, your input on that. So what, I'm going to go back to a point here with the, the 9,000 plus. The 9,000, or actually the whole Lynx program itself, is a building block approach. So if you decide that right now, you know, I just want to make sure I meet, I meet the, the mandate of 2020 for ADSB, and I, I can't really, I don't want to do active traffic right now. This option can be installed later um, at, at your choosing. It doesn't matter. Because all the Lynx NGT 9000 transponders have the active traffic circuit card installed in the unit. So I don't care if you buy a 9000 or a 9000 plus, it's going to have the exact same equipment in it. So you're, you're getting really more bang for the buck because it's already there. So when that happens, all you have to do and when you decide that you want to do the upgrade, it just requires an unlock card to make your unit a 9000 plus and just add our traffic antenna and you're done. So. It's not something you have to send back to the factory and have reworked or anything else. It, it's a very easy upgrade and a very quick upgrade out in the field with your dealer network. Next slide there, Jeff, would be good. So this slide talks about the NGT 9000 interconnectivity. You know, the NGT 9000 transponder interfaces well with Aspen's evolution displays, Avidine's IFD 540 and 440 WASP navigators, MX20, iLink, MX, and GMX200 MFDs showing traffic and weather on the screens. 
Our AML STC, which covers over 1,000 different Part 23 aircraft models, allows for you to use a GPS splitter or coupler if you don't have if you have a current WASH GPS navigator already installed in your panel. That Jeff, I believe you mentioned, and so did Scott did as well. I, I got to reiterate that a little bit. It is definitely a cost savings as well if you don't want to pay the installation labor to add another WASH GPS antenna on top of your aircraft, or you don't have the real estate. That could be another factor. Um, Another thing that is big, if you're flying a composite aircraft, um, like a Cirrus, you don't want to have to pay for the extra charges for an uh, engineering firm to, to give you the official approval to, to do that and cut a hole in that composite aircraft. Um, the uh, Garmin Legacy GNS 530 and 430Ws, um, as well as the, the, the current Garmin GTN 650 and 750s, can also be used in the same configuration, but it will display traffic only. Next slide, please. This is my favorite picture, guys, and I'll tell you the reason why. This is the Lynx NGC 9000 in action. I took these pictures while flying back in a trip in L3 Cirrus SR22, almost, believe it or not, a year ago to the day. I was flying from Olive Branch, Mississippi, to my home airport, Coweta County in Noonan, Georgia. Some of you may know where that's at. And, but the beauty of it was I was doing it during tropical, tropical Storm Cindy. Now, Charlie Charlie Oscar is an uncontrolled field. It's about 30 nautical miles southwest of Atlanta, Hartsville, Jackson International Airport. you got to love it. But in that left picture, that left column, you can see the GPS navigator, and I am 98.3 miles from home. I'm over eh, northern Alabama at that point in time, but I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm almost 100 miles from home. And the Lynx has given me the METAR weather in plain English. But what you don't see in that picture, and I wish I would have taken another picture with it with all the information, if you slide your finger across that screen and move it up and down, you get a whole lot more information as far as winds and everything else at the airport. Um, th you know, this is really huge for me because I know 40 minutes from landing what approach I was probably going to receive from Atlanta Center. So I can set up the GPS navigator way ahead of time and prepare for the approach and landing procedures which really greatly helps me with cockpit management and safety by not scrambling to load and approach during, you know, certainly during a, a tropical storm. Now, the right-hand picture in the Cirrus is another picture that shows all the traffic, as you can see in the traffic side, that are all heading to Atlanta, Hartsville, Jackson. Um, and the, the Weather Next Red page shows where I am flying. As you can see the little white triangle, that is you, and that's the WASP GPS uh, putting your position on that moving map. Um, and it shows that I'm, I'm flying on the outskirts of that of tropical storm Cindy. But you know the big thing about this is it provides it provides a whole lot of situational awareness to me. I love this this screen. I use it in that mode probably 90% of the time. Um, but and the picture on the bottom is is also a Garmin GTN 650, and it's showing the traffic from coming from the links over to it as well. And that's all I need about that slide, Jeff. If we could go on to the next slide, that would be awesome. So another safety option that can be added now or in the future would be our terrain options. We have ETOS. ETOS is our certified Class B TOS, which includes oral, terrain, and obstacle callouts. Another option, and this one everybody is really pumped up about, is terrain vision. It provides visual alerts, which will you all, everybody will be receiving tonight at no charge for attending this webinar. It's an $895 value if you purchase a link before August the 31st, 2018. Um, the, the great part about the terrain options here is the WASH GPS that's inside of this Lynx NGC 9000, as you can see, the 1,200 feet AGL, that is coming from the WASH. So it, it is exact as you can be, and I tell you, I have flown around some very tall towers around Georgia and, and Texas and actually in Florida. And, I mean, it, you can actually nav almost navigate by it. I don't recommend it, but I'm telling you, it is that accurate. So next slide, please, sir. Everyone, this is an eye chart telling in a lot of ways. You know, telling, it, it's really telling in a lot of ways, um, especially when you compare the NGT 9000 versus the Garmin GTX 345. The big thing right there in, the, in red that sticks out to everybody is, hey, it's a lower price of $302 than the GTX 345. 
you know, one of the things uh, we have verified out in the field by it's, it's being reported by our dealers is the installation labor is really the same between both units. The Lynx NGT 9000 features outweigh the Garmin GTX 345 offering. But the big differentiators besides the price is we have a touchscreen display which shows traffic and weather without having to dive deep into the menu function of the navigator which Garmin uses as a display. APAS, I've already talked about it a little bit. We're the only one in the ADSB manufacturing world out here that has that certification. We also are the only ones out there that can actually display WX500 storm scope. And we've, we've got 70,000 storm scopes out there flying around. Um, everybody absolutely loves them. Well, why don't we have a display? Well, we added it to it, and it had no extra charge. It's just another page on the NGT 9000. So the great part about that is you can have next red weather and also lightning detection all in the same place. It also has a TCAS-1 option if you require it. Um, there's a lot of aircraft out there in the Part 23 world that flies uh, 135 or, or they, they fly, stuff, believe it or not, stuff like Beach 1900 aircraft. Um, they, they require TCAS-1 in some situations. We're the only ones out there that provides that option of TCAS-1. Again, we've talked about the terrain vision and the Class B TAWs, but the biggest thing out there is the three-year warranty. We stand behind our product, ladies and gentlemen. We, we love it. It works very well. We have very little returns when it comes down to, to warranty uh, because the simple fact is we build these things to last. We want them to last. And, and matter of fact, if, if something happens, we have a warranty program that, that outlasts everybody else. And on top of it, we want to know what happens at unit. So we, we take care of our customer because you're spending your hard-earned dollars to meet this mandate. You want something that you can install in the aircraft, use it, but don't have to keep going back to the avionics shop every time you turn around for some kind of nuisance problem. Next slide, please, sir. This one's the easy one. So, hey, I do really want to thank you all for attending the webinar. And, again, if you purchase the links before August 31st, 2018, L3 will give you Terrain Vision, which is an $895 value at no charge. So, Scott, why don't you tell everybody online and here's the webinar what they'll be receiving for apps from Aspen for attending the webinar. You bet, Bill. Thank you. Um, so we're, we're making the same uh, value offer of $895, and that goes – to uh, anybody who purchases a PRO or an MFD uh, before, on or before the August 31st date, as Bill mentioned, and uh, we're going to give you uh, free synthetic vision with that purchase, and that's an $895 value. So, um, and, you know, the combo makes it, uh, if you get a NGT 9000 along with the uh, Aspen Evolution uh, flight display, makes the total value about $1,790. So uh, we're excited to make that offer to you. And um, we'll open this up with questions here in just a second. If we go to the next slide, please. And so what we're going to uh, – we're going to be at Oshkosh like we are every year. Uh, for those of you who are lucky enough to be attending, make sure you come by and see us. Uh, we're going to have uh, in both – booths, whether you're uh, visiting L3 or Aspen, or of course you can visit both, but uh, Aspen Avionics, we're going to be in Hangar B, and uh, we'll have uh, both systems set up there where you can see the interface, and we'll also have some new products to show you along with our uh, new E5 that we're going to be uh, coming out with. So uh, thanks again for coming, and I'm going to let uh, Bill finish up there, and we'll get to Q&A. Yep, I thank you, Scott, and we're also at Hangar C at Oshkosh. Um, Again, we want you to visit both booths at Oshkosh and Hangar B and Hangar C because we'll have this exciting duo in action right there in the booth so you can actually take, come and take a look at it, touch it, feel it. We invite you to do that. We want you to come look at it. We'll give you the demos. Um, we'll run through all the, the features of all the products in the Aspen booth or, or the L3 booth and, and show you why situational awareness is key and the differentiators really make the difference in your ADSB solution. And that's all I have. Yeah. Thanks, well, Bill. thanks to Bill and Scott. Really appreciate it. Let's open it up. We've got a whole list of questions that have come in. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll read some of those through. We'll see if we can get some discussion going and understand uh, some of these things. So um, one of the things uh, that has come up, Bill, you know, what question comes up about diversity? 
Uh, can you talk a little bit when you're dealing with a transponder and ADSB with diversity, what that means? Well, diversity, um, honestly, in the United States, I don't recommend it. Um, because of the rebroadcast of ADSB, um, you're really not going to have a, a, a problem. You'll never see the difference between a, a 9000D, which is a version of the links that we do have, and the straight 9000. Uh, because, like we were talking about the rebroadcast, um, you're never going to have an antenna shading problem. You're always, for the most part, especially in the air, you're going to be within coverage. You're going it, to, it's line of sight. It's, you know, you got your antenna up in, on the ground, and you're flying over, and your transponder antenna sees it. So, personally, I, you know, I, I don't recommend diversity in, in the United States because I just, I can't see paying extra for the diversity model when I'm not going to see a benefit for that. Does that make any sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, another question that came up, and frankly, even though I've been flying behind it, I wasn't sure the answer myself, and that is, I, uh, you know, you can put traffic on both halves, if you choose to, of the display on uh, the links. Can you have them at different scales if you do that? No, sir. Actually, um, we default to traffic because running into, into different air, or another aircraft is a really bad thing, but which, what happens is, Whatever you do on one side of the screen or the other, as far as the traffic display, it happens to the other side. And the reason why, you don't want to get into a, a, a range where you don't see something. So that is the very reason why, if you're on the left-hand side of the screen, and that's usually where I have my traffic, because once I put in my, touch my code, put it in, in the uh, left-hand side, I swipe it out of the way, because I don't need to sit there and look at the number 6132 for an hour and a half flight. I put the traffic over <laughs> Um, and, that, so, and, and I will say that's exactly how I use it as well. I mean, once you put your transponder code in there, you might as well have that left pane showing you traffic, and then I just keep using the right pane as a as a working screen for terrain or or for looking stuff up for METARs and TAFs and and all things that go along with that. You're right. Oh, absolutely. And then the reason why I, I slide it immediately is because the lost GPS in, in the links also knows when you, you've got forward airspeed. So when you get the 30 knots, it's automatically going to turn it on for you. Now, there's some situations in some airports, they're going to want you to, re they're going to require you to keep it on on the ground. That's fine. You can always go to that page and override that. But the links is so much smarter than me because sometimes I can't remember to turn it from standby, to the, the old traditional transponder from to altitude mode, and then I forget to do it when I get back on the ground. The, the links is so much smarter. It does that when it detects 30 knots of forward airspeed, it automatically goes in, into altitude mode. And when you land and you slow down below 30 knots, and it's programmable. We could do, you, it can be set up for, by the install shop. It puts it back into standby mode. So I don't need really the transponder screen after I, I enter the code. I'm done with it. So I get it out of the way. Got it. A um, couple questions for you, Scott. Uh, the first is, can you talk a little bit about 3D traffic uh, uh, on the uh, Aspen display? Sure. So the way that works is so with synthetic vision, we basically label the traffic icon um, relative to your position. So let's say you have an oncom uh, oncoming target. Um, it's going to put that right up on the screen in front of you. Uh, with a full screen view, it'll put it above or below the horizon based off of altitude and also uh, color coded uh, based off the threat. So it's uh, it's pretty slick and, and pretty compelling when uh, when you see it in flight. It definitely gets your attention. And the next question is, um, uh, and this is something I also noticed. I've now uh, that on the when you have the PFD, you can get. Next rad, whether on the PFD, is that correct? And if you have a second Aspen tube for an MFD, that's when you can get all the other products also uh, on on your Aspen display. Can you explain the what is displayed on which unit? Correct. So on the Pro, so the uh, EFD uh, 1000 Pro, which is evolutionary flight display, um, you get the uh, traffic and next rad. On uh, on the HSI portion there, um, and that and by the way, I didn't mention this before. There is no charge for the uh, unlock for that with uh, the L3 NGT 9000. So that's another. Uh, we we normally charge uh, a $795 unlock, and uh, there's no charge for that with uh, with this interface. So there's another uh, another little nugget. Um, but anyway, so on a pro, you get 
traffic, which I really like because it overlays it on top of the HSI and as well as on uh, in synthetic vision, which is really cool. But, you know, it shows the targets right around you. It's easy to decipher who's a threat, who's not a threat. We give, uh, uh, we label the targets uh, in the little triangles with the trend vectors so you can see exactly where they're, where they're going to be at uh, in 60 seconds, where they're going, all that. Um, and then over, if you have an MFD, uh, then you get all the rest of the products, the uh, Aramet segments, TFRs, and uh, winds, temperatures aloft, all, all, all of those products. And you can overlay um, whatever you like on, uh, on the screen, and it's very customizable, which is what I love about the Aspen products. And it's putting it right in front of you. So as a pilot, it's right above, you know, your, uh, or right there in your line of sight, right in front of you with uh, right beside your uh, PFD. Excellent. Now, uh, Bill, we've had a question about the WX500. Can you explain how that interacts or someone has one of those that interacts if they're interested in the links? Actually, I just saw that in chat, and I want to make sure I don't confuse people. The WX500 is not a wasted box by no means. So you have to have that processor. What what the Lynx does is give you an extra display. Right now, currently, you either have it on your MFD, you have it on the Aspens, you have it on the – Avidines, whatever navigator you have, like Garmin, um, that's where you can have WX500 storm scope weather. We're giving you, again, more situational awareness and, and more displays to put it on. So you can take our WX500 and add it at a page for it, it's in the software to uh, have a, a own dedicated display on the Lynx 9000 itself. So it's not required to have another display somewhere else, but yes, you do have to have the processor and antenna on the aircraft for it to work. Okay. And, Bill, is, uh, is there any information or where should people look to get information when it is available on the new FISB products that will be coming out? I would recommend um, contacting our technical support staff, um, or actually probably the easiest way to do it is go to our website, because I'm sure we're going to be having some information on that coming when it becomes available. Okay, and that's, I think it's, uh, what, Lightning uh, and Pyrap, something along, I, I think those are part of those that are that are going to be coming, and, and uh, certainly we'll stay tuned and see uh, how those become available on the, on the link system as well. Um, the, uh, let's see, we have another question that, uh, ju that just came in about, um, uh, let's see, about the difference when we start talking about, we mentioned earlier about, you know, why we went with active traffic with the 9,000 plus, and I think there's still some question about how does, you know, what exactly is active traffic compared to ADSB traffic and, and why that is so relevant. Certainly in our case, we've seen it uh, really matter in the local airport environment. Well, you're right. Absolutely, Jeff. The active traffic is basically our Skywatch technology that we, we've had for years and years and years. Um, where it makes a difference, especially um, flying in the mountains, if you're at an airport that you may not be able to receive the ADSB um, ground station until you get up to, uh, it could be anything. It could be 1,500 feet. It could be in, like in the mountains of Colorado. There's some places that it may, you may not be able to receive that information traffic or weather or anything from ADSB until you get to three or 4,000 feet to you get into coverage. So with ADSB, it's a great system, don't get me wrong, but it's limited because of coverage. So the active traffic system works all the time anywhere you're at. I don't care if you're on the ground. I don't care if you're 100 feet off the ground or, or 1,000 feet off the ground. You're going to get that active traffic system. And, and situational awareness and, and and safety is, is the main feature there for, for that reason. Right. And um, the other question that just came in has to do with audio alerts. And as I understand it, since that just can go to pretty much any audio panel that can deal with an unswitched uh, audio input, is that correct? That is correct. Yes, sir. Okay. And, um, and, and lastly, we have uh, quite a few questions, of course, from people. We've got a mix of people that are interested in looking to make their decision now, 
and also quite a few people who may have just become customers. And so a, a message to all of you is if uh, anyone has a particular question as to whether their own unit can be updated with the tonight's promotion, you can reach out through the, uh, we've uh, put both the email there for both Bill and Scott, and uh, you can follow up on your unique situation and that they will be able to address what can be done to help you with that. Um, last question, it did mention, again, just a follow-up on active traffic. It asked if it shows non-transponder traffic. I'm going to guess that if you don't have a transponder, we certainly don't have a swinging radar on the top, so there's nothing we can really do about that. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Yeah, well, one more and question all I saw there. Hey, Jeff, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. And it's important to know, and it's something I didn't mention. Uh, there's somebody who's talking about mode C in the chat room, and I'm not sure – the beauty about Lynx is if your mode C, is, current mode C that's working in your aircraft right now, if it's working, Lynx accepts it. It accepts all mode C, serial gray code, it doesn't matter, it'll accept it. And you don't, there's no requirement to go out and buy a special digital altitude encoder or anything. So that's the cost savings as well. Right, yeah, because it can take that gray code or it can take serial for your, uh, your encoder input, right? That's correct. Yeah, and, and I'll tell for the listeners that are out there, uh, you know, I, I, we did our install because, you know, we're also AMP and IA, and I will say it really went very, very smoothly in terms of an installation of transponder, and uh, and, and um, it was quite uh, quite straightforward. I can't imagine that it would be uh, any more difficult than, than any transponder that's out there and uh, worked and powered up the first time. Um, there is a question that just came up, Bill, having to do with interfacing with a, a G500 or 600. Can you uh, 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 tell us if there's any interface for that? There is. I hate, I'm going to say it because this is our webinar. Garmin does not want to play nice with anybody. Uh, they actually would like for you to buy all their products. Um, so that's the reason why weather, they will not let us put weather on it. Again, through the Skywatch protocol that we've had, and we didn't change, we, we didn't, you know, change something that wasn't broke, and it was already certified by the FAA and, and blessed by Garmin. So, long story short, the Garmin products will display traffic only. It will not display weather. They will not allow us to do that, even though we're open architecture and we want to play with everybody. They don't want to play with us. So, as far as any Garmin questions and what uh, interfaces links will do, it will do traffic only. Excellent. Well, to everyone else that's uh, out there, uh, thank you so much. If you have follow-up questions, we have uh, put out there uh, contact information for both Bill and for Scott. And most importantly to everyone, yes, there will be a recording of tonight's presentation. It takes us about 24 hours in order to produce that and get everything set up for it, but it'll be available both through Social Flight, as well as emailed out to you, and I am sure it will also be made available by both Aspen Avionics and by L3 Technologies. So again, thank you all so much. Contact information is available directly through the chat here, and we will try to make that available on any emails that go out to you as well so that you can follow up. And there, as we as mentioned, this partnership makes it possible for information to be available directly for your avionics dealer through a very wide network of that. And you can also contact Aspen Avionics and L3 directly to get additional information for it. I'd like to thank this evening both Bill and Scott for such a great presentation. Um, you know, obviously, I'm enthusiastic as a customer. Uh, I, I, I love the links that I fly behind, and so uh, I apologize for the gushing, but it really is a fantastic system. Very, very happy with it. And I'd like to thank everyone for joining us this evening. Again, socialflight.com gives you this information. You can follow up with us. And thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. Mm -hmm.